and Dave Morris chatting with the food editor of the Oklahoman, uh, Mr. Dave Cathy, the food dude. And uh, Dave, it's, it's a it's a busy, important week in the restaurant industry. And I'm not just talking about the birthday of uh, Chef Kurt Fleischbrusser. <laughs> That's right. Big 6-0. Happy birthday, Kurt. Absolutely. Happy birthday, Happy Chef. birthday. You got a pandemic. <laughs> You'll always remember it for multiple reasons. That's right. That's uh, right. We heard from uh, Oklahoma City Mayor uh, David Holt earlier today. My intention to let Oklahoma City's shelter in place order expire on April 30th. Dave, you've been speaking with a lot of restaurant owners and businesses. Mm -hmm. What does this mean in their world? Well, it's opportunity for sure, but it's not an opportunity that the people I'm talking that I have spoken with, the, the, I'm sorry, I should say the majority of the people I've spoken with are going to take advantage of. It's all fine and dandy. There's a handful. I talked to David Egan at Cattleman's. They are working towards opening on May 1st. He didn't guarantee they'd be open. There's a lot of work that has to be done to make that happen, and we'll get to that. Kathy Cummings, her and her husband, Sean, they're going to try and reopen on Friday. She told me that they're probably going to do reservation only. They've had to remove some tables to create some space because they got pretty tight quarters in there. Uh, but for the most part, most of the folks I've talked to uh, are middle of, Mar middle of May, and Jay Mays at Cafe 7 they, and, and uh, the Hamilton, they decided all the way to June 1st. So part of that has to do with the regulations that were, uh, they're, they're re not really regulations so much as guidelines that the governor's office uh, posted today at the Commerce Department site. And those uh, guidelines were put together by a task force of food service professionals. And they, they basically put like a, like a phased uh, thing into place to, to reopen. Phase one is keeping your table six to eight feet apart in the dining room, okay? So that, that, what that tells us is, what David Egan told me is that uh, Cattleman's is gonna operate with half a dining room, okay? So it's great for the diner, I suppose. You can go in and you've got plenty of room to operate. So that's gonna work out. But we have to keep in mind that these restaurants are now, they're reopening with the idea that they can only make half as much as they normally do. Yeah, let's talk about the, the economies here. I mean, yeah. they're, they're really behind the eight ball here of, yeah they're closed. So the revenue is, is not what it was, even if they're doing takeout or curbside, right. it's not where they were, but if they reopen, they can only reopen to a certain point that affects right. the, the, the amount of employees in the building right. and it affects your revenue. It's not business as usual. Plus there's the ramp up part of getting back in business. That's right. These, these regulations are asking that people take some, some, yeah, make some investment to do this, to do a deep cleaning before they reopen to retrain all their employees on all the little details of, of hand washing and making sure you have hand sanitizer all over the restaurant for your employees and for the guests, several and for the guests, several, lots of detail. It's a little bit like a, like a hospital, you know, like the way a hospital uh, uh, treats surgery, you know, all the, all the details that they go to make sure that they're, that they, that they're clean. And it's not quite that bad, but it's in that neighborhood. And, and well, restaurants just aren't, this is not part of the, of, of what they're about, you know. It's, I mean, obviously, yes. The the one thing that's good about this for rest for for us on the consumer side to, to have some 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 confidence is that restaurants do have a much higher standard of of keeping clean. I mean, most of our home kitchens would not pass a health inspection, you know, from the health department. So I mean, the they they pass them all the time. The joke yeah. is, if they ever had to have uh, since they perhaps a lack of health insurance, they could just always go back there because they've got all the tools and the cleanliness, right. you know, it's, it's right, a right, right. So they have a lot of the stuff in place. Now they're going to be asked to go over the top to make this happen. And again, that's where it gets tricky because they're going to be asked to invest and go back into this thing, but do it knowing you can only serve at most half of your restaurant. So because of that, there are those that are thinking, well, let's just wait because phase two, that means 30 days from, that means at the end of May, if, if we still, if the public health still allows, if the numbers are still declining at the rate that we need them to, then we're gonna expand the amount of capacity that the dining rooms can, can have. So some have just decided we'll wait till that point to, to do it. We'll stick with the, with the delivery because heck, a lot of places are just now getting their delivery and carry out system in place. So, and it's picking up a little bit. Some places uh, like uh, Kurt Fleischresser told me that uh, Sushi Neko, you know, they do a lot of, they've already been, you, you live over in that area, you know, Sushi Neko and Takeout, heck, they do a ton of takeout business there. So for them, the, what they had to add on to wasn't quite what maybe a place that relied mostly on people coming in the door. 
So every concept is going to have a little bit of a different look at going into this thing. The other thing to consider, uh, which might just terrify restaurant owners, is a rolling lockdown cycle of, yes. of hey, yes. you get back in business, you ramp up all your staff, you ramp up the customers, the workflow, the delivery, the supply chain, and then exactly. things spike and things are shut back down. Yeah, that's, you can't, uh, some of the folks I've talked to know they have one reopen in them, and that's it. And they, they're going to reopen one time. If it works, great. If it doesn't, they're probably done. Because most of these operations are not set up to just, oh, okay, furlough, no furlough. Fur you know, they're just small family-owned rest uh, businesses for the most part, really small businesses. Some of the bigger ones might be able to do stuff like that. But if, if, we, if we end up having, if we end up opening on May 1st and then having to close again a week or two later, that's going to be a disaster. You spoke with others. Uh, you, you spoke with some who are planning to, to get back in business as quickly as yeah. they can, but you also spoke with others, as you mentioned, who are going to hang out for a little bit. What, what were they telling you? Are they just gauging the situation saying, mm, yes. it doesn't quite feel right from the feedback that they're getting? Everything, everybody, like I mentioned before, everybody's just a little bit different. Uh, some, uh, like Cafe Cacao, they just reopened for delivery and carry out Wednesday. Okay. They shut down like as, like as soon as the word started. And, and the owners there, Alex and Luigi told me, really, it was health. It was just, they were scared. They thought this is unsafe. We, this is unsafe for our staff. So we're going to close on those grounds. So they got their PPB money after a long journey and they got it. And so they reopened on Wednesday. And so they just got to that point on Wednesday and they feel comfortable with that. Their employees are comfortable coming back for that. I don't know that they're going to be comfortable turning right around the next day and say, okay, now we're going to add this next piece to it. So that's their, their concern was strictly health for others like Bruce Reinhardt. He's been running around town, trying everything to try and drum up business, try and keep the business going. He's sort of been a, like a leader in that. We're going to try going in the grocery stores. We're going to ramp up the, the, to go. Well, Bruce is not going to open until middle of May because it doesn't feel right to him. Uh, he, you know, he's been hustling as much or harder than anyone. And Bruce is not jumping onto that May 1st date because he doesn't feel right about it. Like in the case of Kathy and Sean, they maybe have a little more control. Like Sean has been closed from day one. Uh, Sean Cummings restaurant has not been open. Kathy has just been doing a little bit of uh, to go for the last couple of weeks. She's been doing kind of building it up. So they've, they've had control over their dining room in a different way. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. Uh, as far as those that are, are opening, it's, it's just the opposite way. Their, their circumstances just allow them is really all it comes down to. It's just some piece of the puzzle sets up for them better to go ahead and open next week rather than in three weeks. And plus they may be better set up to handle the risk of reopening. I think that plays into it as well. You mentioned Vito's and, and Kathy, and now you just got me craving lasagna. <laughs> so <Yep>. good. <laughs> hey, you also mentioned PPP. And before we dive into your Sunday story of the nuts and bolts of how that's going, um, what were you hearing from the restaurant community here? Were they able to get PP for the PPP for the most part? Was the, were there the part, yeah. what were some of the stories you were hearing? Yeah, for the most part, uh, people were able to get it. I, I did talk to a couple of people who who uh, who applied for it. Were told they they got it, but that the money was out. So that has happened. Now, as you know, today actually today the uh, Trump uh, President Trump actually signed uh, like a half a trillion dollars more. And I think it was something about about three hundred and ten billion dollars of the money that was that was in today's package is going to re up that PPP account. So a lot of that's already in place. And then and there's some new stipulations. Uh, some of the money from the bigger places that got it, uh, Danny Meyer got uh, ten million, and uh, Bruce Chris got twenty million. Well, those two companies have both turned that money back in. So it, there is some good faith going on out there. And it, also, the optics just did not look good, right? It doesn't. And, and hey, let's be honest. It isn't always all, all's well that ends well. Sometimes it's timing. And so some people maybe didn't get that money right off the bat. That might have been the end of it for them. So we can't say that it's all, all, it's all just fine because they got the money back. It, it is what it is. There was, a, there was some problems. We're doing our best to fix the problems. So that's really, at the end of the day, all you can ask is that you, you at least if you see problems, you try and fix it. And, and you have to give the federal government credit. They have done that so far. Chatting with Dave Cathy, food editor, the, food editor of the Oklahoman. Uh, he just published kind of the state of the state of, of things as they were released today from the governor and the mayor's office. You can read that online at oklahoman.com right now. 
Coming up this weekend, as I mentioned, you, you dive into the mechanics of PPP, and it's not, as you might guess, as cut and dry as government says, restaurant owner, here's your money. There's a lot of layers of complication there as well. There are, and the thing to remember is with the PPP is that it is not aimed directly at restaurants. See, the, the thing that most, that a lot of people probably don't understand, because restaurant, everyone assumed it was mainly for restaurants because restaurants had the most number of people laid off in March, something like half a million people laid off in March uh, in restaurants alone, close to that number. It, it, it's it's staggering amount, but the bulk of, of the, of the people who really needed help were really in healthcare and manufacturing and in the technical areas that were supporting the actual effort to fight the COVID-19. So you're talking about the people that are supporting New York and supporting Seattle. That's where the, the primary amount of that money went. Uh, restaurants got about 30 billion out of that initial offering. So that was problem number one. And then of course we had, like, like we mentioned briefly, with some of the bigger places claiming that money before the smaller companies could get at it. Well. It happened and we've worked around it, so it's moving forward. So that part of it, you know, we're past it. Then the second part of the problem is a little bit of something we talked about before, whereas it doesn't quite jibe with the unemployment, emergency unemployment that's going on right now. Uh, Keith Paul told me one of the problems that, that you have is that once you get your PPP money, the clock starts ticking right then. That's eight weeks. It's an eight-week deal. So you only have eight weeks worth to make this thing work. Well, the unemployment is guaranteed for another 13 weeks. So again, there's another, it, it, what it really comes down to is, is, is well-meaning as the PPP is, it's a little bit of a square peg and, and doesn't mean you can't jam it in there and, and make it work because plenty of people are doing that. It's just not as, it's, it's not as clean as you'd hope, uh, but what is in the middle of a pandemic? So people, the good news is uh, restaurant people are, they're used to this. Every day, something doesn't show up. <laughs> Someone doesn't show up to work. Some delivery isn't made. Somebody's mad in the dining room. So they're used to, to thinking on their feet. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the term, well, we're making it up as we go along. You know, These are people that are actually pretty good at it. They're good at improvising. So I have confidence in them. But then again, you, but the reality, it just can't go on forever and ever. There, the, there is some good news coming out Sunday. I mean, it's not, we're in a place where there is optimism. And, and, and there's, there's opportunities going forward. It's not quite as bleak as it maybe looked a month ago, but uh, there's a lot of work to do. Good stuff. He's right in the middle of things. In fact, you sort of alluded to it earlier, right in the middle of it, there's a new taco place. So there's, there's things still brewing in the local yes. community, right? Yes, just today. Just today, I, I traveled, I made the long drive from my house Took me about three minutes <laughs> up to uh, 164th and Rockwell. Uh, I think it's a total express gas station. And uh, Jay Mays and the folks over at Cafe 7, his partners at Cafe 7, they re recently reached an agreement with this gas station. And they've had a little sandwich place in there for a while. They've been serving tacos and burgers out of the back for a while. They got a little drive through window. Well, they're going to install Cafe Siete. So it, it's a new iteration of Cafe 7. It's, it's a, it's a, it's not Tex-Mex either. Uh, there's a guy there who's been working named Luis. He's from El Salvador. And, he, and I can, I got to tell you, he's got some homemade chorizo in there that uh, is going to, is going to be really tough for me to stay out of. <laughs> so yeah, May 1st. So there's one thing those guys are going to do on May 1st. They're not going to reopen uh, Cafe 7 for dining room and they're not going to open the Hamilton. They're, they're doing to go stuff there, but they will, uh, add, you know, this new Cafe Siete. It's got, uh, it's got a, like I said, it's got a drive through and it's a gas station. So you can get some gas, walk in, get some tacos and get out. We talked about lasagna. We talked about tacos. I think our work here is done. Be sure to follow <laughs> Dave Cappy. Uh, Happy weekend, everybody. <laughs> it's coverage you can find on Oklahoman.com and of course across the social media channels as well. Dave, thanks for your time. Uh, stay safe. Have a good weekend. Dude.